lightweight aspects on this occasion i on behalf of myself and on the behalf of uttarakhand state center welcome our honorable national president institution of engineers dr hemant othakre our chairman marine engineering division board institution of engineer commando bm bhandarkar dr g ranganath chairman committee for advancement technology and engineering institution of engineer and our learned panelist dr chatur rashid vessel traffic supervisor port authority of tangeri from morocco dr nt rangareddy chairman and md legion technologies india private limited and chairman mechanical division engineering division board institution of engineers and mr saptashi basu consultant marine engineering society of india and our ec member and moderator of this uh, webinar engineer amit kumar singh and engineer sc chauhan honorary secretary uh, uttarakhand district center dehradun who have spared their valuable time from their busy schedule for taking part in this technical webinar i also welcome all the uh, council members corporate members institution of, of institution of engineers and all the engineers and the respected ladies and gentlemen who have joined us for, uh, from various parts of our country and abroad for taking part in this technical webinar it is a matter of great privilege and honor for me as the chairman of uttarakhand state center in welcoming you all the dignitaries in this very important technical uh, webinar on composite material marine engineering and their lightweight aspects which is being organized under the aegis of marine engineering division board institution of engineers calcutta as you all know that composite material have been introduced in almost every industry in some form or other Survey, <coughs> since then uh, since these composite materials can be manufactured in various shapes and they allow great design flex flexibility the opportunity to select the constituents in order to obtain the desired properties and then through uh, the design makes the optimum use of properties in a uh, diverse situation that make the composite material industry a very attractive proposition composite material can be Uh, strong and stiff but may be very lightweight for example steel since in marine engineering lightweight aspects is very important uh, as such the lightweight composite materials are in great use uh, such as uh, thermal expansion is quite low it re uh, reduces the tension on fixed structure due to temperature changes moreover these materials are uh, corrosion resistive as well due to these properties the maintenance cost of the composite structure is reduced to a great extent the composite materials are very crucial for marine industry and their lightweight vehicles such as lightweight vehicles consume less fuels they are capable to transport more cargo from the same quantity of fuel they consume composite materials do not corrode therefore more resistive to abrasive environment they reduce the maintenance cost to a great extent due to these compelling reasons and upcoming environmental regulation and economical challenges the composition uh, the composite material is being upgraded day by day and operation cost of is being reduced in order to maximize the uh, maximum potential from a vessel our learned panelist and our honorable consultant marine engineering society will discuss these elements and various problems in detail which are being faced in developing the composite material and they will try to tell us the various technological solution available for these problems in detail thanking you and over to our moderator amit kumar singh for further continuation of this technical webinar over to shri amit kumar singh thank you sir for your wonderful words now i would extend warm welcome to commander dr b m bhandarkar chairman marine engineering division board institution of engineers Commander Dr. V. M. Manarkar. He is highly educated, former chairman, Indian Institution of Industrial Engineering, having 40 years of marine engineering experience across IMR, IRS, DG Shipping, NAMAC, Dockyard, Navy, and various international assignment. He is also board member of Asia Pacific Industrial Engineering and Management Society, Japan. Is lot more than the introduction. Honors and award: Lillian Gilbert Award, Prime Minister Trophy, continuous three years. Coal India Property Award. Distinguished Triple I Service Award, Commendation by Flag Officer, Commanding in Chief twice. On publication, two edited books, twenty-seven proceeding, fifty-seven technical paper. Awards in the name of Dr. Bhandarkar, Dr. Bhandarkar Award for the Medal Student by BJTI, Mumbai University, and the Nagpur University. 
Kamandarkar <clears throat> Leadership Award for the CEOs and CMD for the visionary leadership and institution building. I would like to invite Commander Dr. B.M. Bhandarkar for the formal letters. Sir, over to you, please. Thank you, Amitji, for this uh, introduction. Honorable Dr. Heman Thakre, the visionary president of Institution of Engineers, who has devoted 44 decades, 40 years of his quality life for the cause of technical education and uh, promotion of technology in our country. And he is training this wonderful institution, the largest institution in this world, to the level of technical excellence, which was never before. My friend, Dr. G. Ranganathanji, the passionate chairman of Committee for Advancement of Technology and Engineering, whose vision is ushering the new domain, ushering the new benchmark in almost all the areas of institution of engineers. Engineer Dharam Chandraji, the respected chairman of Uttarakhand State Center, whose devotion and sagacity is boosting the technical activities in this Devbhumi. Today's distinguished faculty, my friend and colleague at IEI Council, Dr. N. T. Rangari Digaru, who is also happened to be chairman of Mechanical Engineering Division, our friend from Morocco, Mr. Chatta Rashid, and my friend, the philosopher, and the product of DMET, Mr. Saptar Sibashu, who is maritime consultant. Mr. S.C. Chawan, dynamic honorary secretary of Uttarakhand State Center. Committee members of Uttarakhand State Centers. Engineering, Amit Kumarji, the indomitable force behind this seminar, distinguished guests, participants, dear students, our dedicated staff from headquarters of Institution of Engineers, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure to extend my best wishes to all the participants of this most relevant and happy webinar. After the unfortunate pandemic time, the Marine Engineering Division, under the visionary leadership of Honorable President Dr. Thakresa and able guidance of Chairman Kate, has embarked on ambitious passage of technological and professional contributions to the emerging to the emerging Indian aspirations and Atmanirbhar Bharat. In our quest of excellence, many innovative and landmark activities have been started by the division in the recent past, in just three months of time. The Marine Info Letter, which was started to take on board all the members in this beautiful journey of professional excellence is receiving many accolades. The series of technical activities being conducted with Wither describe the priorities of the region. The flurry of activities was never seen before. This is possible by the active cooperation of all stakeholders and the efficient and dedicated efforts from the staff of Institution of Engineers Headquarters. Mr. Chairman has already set the agenda, already set the ball rolling. He has told us what is composites and what are the benefits of composites. As he mentioned, composites are strong 
lightweight and durable materials, which are seeing intriguing adoption in transportation, construction, renewable energy, and many other markets. My brief, one of the important area today the whole world is facing is the climate issues. Everything today is revolving beyond the climate management. So our distinguished faculty, uh, faculty here, while they are going to enlighten us with their knowledge, expertise, and experiences. I would like to bring or rather share some of my thoughts with you on the very important aspects of sustainability and the composites. Sustainability is becoming an ever more compelling argument in the material selection process. Composite structure deliver a long service life combined with low maintenance requirement and lightweight composites. They result in lower energy consumption throughout a product life. To fully exploit the sustainability benefits of composite parts, it is essential to consider the three parts of life cycle. The first part of composite life cycle is making the part. The second would be using the part. And third will the end of use. Normally, we say that end of life cycle. But in case of composites, it is better to use end of use than end of life cycle as the composites have very, very long life cycle like Composite materials weigh less than meters, which leads to lower fuel consumption and reduced CO2 emissions. Many of us know that the Dreamliner Boeing 387 was held as the world's first plastic commercial aircraft. Its weight is around 50% of the aircraft structure is made of composite material. The resulting weight reduction combined with improved aerodynamics and engines delivers 20% saving in fuel consumption. Corrosion resistant composites also require 40 to 65% less maintenance compared to aluminum, which bring cost and environmental advantage. So with this advantage, the sustainability contribution of composite happens to be much better than any other materials, engineering materials being exploited, being used today. Finally, the detail about composite, the intricacy are going to be explained by our distinguished facility. I thank Marine Engineering Division Board, the headquarter, my friend Amit Singh, the Uttarakhand State Center for giving me this opportunity to share some of my thought. And I wish you all a very good uh, deliberations, a very good take home material. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful words. Now I would extend warm welcome to Dr. G. Rangnath, Chairman Kate, Committee for Advancement of Technology and Engineering Institute of Engineer. Dr. G. Rangnath working as a principal at the Man College of Engineering since 2008. 
He obtained his BME and PhD degree in mechanical engineering disciplinary. He has over 34 years of versatile interdisciplinary professional experience and has published over 100 technical research articles in reputed national and international journals and conferences in the addition to 10 books on the engineering and technology. Presently, he is serving as a syndicate member of Anna University Chennai and also served as a syndicate member and senior member of Piriyar University Salem. I would like to invite Dr. G. Rangnath for the formal address. Thank you, Amit Kumar Singh. And you are doing a wonderful job as a moderator. Thank you, sir. And your, uh, as well, uh, committee member of Uttarakhand State Center. I am very happy and thankful for you. Respected President of IEI, who is one of the youngest uh, President General, I used to call him Young President for IEI. Beyond Young, he is in dynamic. He is bringing a lot of, lot of innovations in IEI. And uh, where we have a strong belief that his time is going to be memorable by all the council members of present and future to recall the IA history in a different way. Chairman of Uttagata State Center, and uh, I can call him as a serious citizen of or among the council, elderly person, engineer Dharm Chandraji, Commander Master M. Bandarkarji, Chairman of Marina Division Board. We can call him as an icon of marine division with his experience, exposure, and contribution speaks a lot. And he's one of my good colleagues in uh, council. And we became a close friends in a short span of time of a couple of months. Then engineer N.T. Rangaradi, chairman, Mechanical Engineering Division Board, as well as my good council member in the council and my family friend from long years. Honorable Secretary of Uttarakhand State Center, S.C. Chandraji, Moderator Amit Kumar Singh Ji, I am very happy that you are doing a good job. Two eminent speakers, apart from Nangaradi from industry, these two eminent speakers from the field of marine, Tathathar Rasid Ji, as well as Saptashi Basu, all the company members of Uttarakhand State Center, quoted members of Marine Division Board from IAI, all the participants for this wonderful program, good evening to all of you. As a CATA chairman or beyond that, as a council member, I am so happy to say openly, Commander Dr. Bhaskar M. Bandarji, Though he is a lonely council member in the Marine Division and the President has given some of the corporate members to support him, but he is doing a wonderful job for the past few months I am observing to be called a small division, but doing a good number of technical activities in compared to so many other divisions in IEI. So I am very happy to congratulate Bhaskar M. Bandarji, Bhaskar Ji. Not only webinars and seminars, he is having a beautiful roadmap for coming uh, Convention of Marine Division also, which I recently have given approval and I believe it is going to happen. And coming to Uttarakhand State Center, though the State Center is uh, small and uh, new, and of course I also taken a new day. Yes, I am observing good number of programs you are applying for IIA headquarters, webinars, seminars. And as a part of IA, we are encouraging all of our activities and we are doing well. And even every program we are observing, there will be a good number of participants as well. That indicates your programs are good. Generally, for all India seminars and conferences only, there are maybe two or three speakers or four speakers. Even for webinars, you are identifying field experts. And you are drawing them, bringing them, and doing a good activities in the sense you are at it of technical activities to pumping on the platform of IEI, to which I should thank you and I should congratulate you. Coming to today's topic, application of composite material, particularly in marine industry, for the want of the lightweight aspects. Composite metal itself is a different topic because it has taken. For the want of application of 
aerospace then medical in the beginning in medical our former president abdul kalam ji is the one who has brought a big innovation in bringing medical applications particularly for artificial leg when one young boy lost his leg with the accident when they take an artificial leg he was unable to walk because of more weight of this artificial leg and it's happened that our uh, former president of course is no more with us but till his memory will be with all of us ever forever he is the one who is given again idea of why can't to bring uh, light material which is going to have a light weight and better durability for medical application as well from there it is taken and of course for the aerospace it was long long back it is there composite metal means it is just more than 2 meters combination and bringing as a one material advantages which is having less weight better mechanical properties better corrosion properties or chemical properties better thermal properties and so on with all these things even our one of the speaker today dr nt rangareddy who is a manufacturer and supplier of lot of lot of material for defense as well as aerospace certainly he will also speak to all of you today all the three speakers two speakers from uh, same domain of narain one speaker from uh, again supplier from the manufacturer sides they are going to speak and especially for want of the ship if you are going to reduce the weight of the ship by giving a better material or composite material automatically it is going to reduce the less weight so the, all the builders of the ship they want less weight because they want to take more luggages and less weight because it is going to consume less fuel less fuel consumption because it is going to give less pollution and less weight less pollution less fuel exemption then more weightage of transportation more economical for them in revenue then automatically all these things is going to give consumption may be then i release of co2 for emission it is going to be advantages and more than all these things again being it is a marine field corrosion property is most important for this material what are the material they going to bring with the less weight more robust mechanical properties better and all these things beyond this chemical properties to be called corrosion property is most important the, but all these things again it should be validated by regulatory agency of marine division board what are the material we bringing what are the way we are going to introduce the regulatory authority has to endorse and i believe today the topic of this when we go to give a discussion and deliberations an outcome of this certainly it is going to be well put out regulatory authority being both speakers from the field one speaker from manufacturer side all the speakers are going to give a lot of things so with this let me thank the uttarakhand state center for this wonderful program let me thank our marine board chairman good friend of me commander dr baskaram bandarkar ji and let me thank my president of iia who made me to be with all of you as a chairman of cate otherwise i don't have council member the committee with this grace is this while here yeah. and let me thank all the three speakers including rangar reddy other speakers for your grace presence and let me thank our moderator telish kumar ji and let me thank our king su headquarter staff who is nicely coordinating with the o center with the division board chairmen and the panelists and so on with this let me thank all of you i believe this program is going to be a big success and a wonderful way thank you all jai hind thank you sir for your encouraging and motivational words now would extend warm welcome to dr h o thakre president institution of engineers india dr hemant tomkar rao thakre is graduate in civil engineering and post graduate in structural engineering from mr sarya national institute of technology nagpur and was awarded phd in civil engineering by rtm nagpur university he joined ashwantrai chavan college of engineering nagpur a flagship institute of meghe group of institution in 1984 and was professor of civil engineering and executive director technical dr hemant thakre has over 35 years of rich experience in engineering social and educational field and is currently working with senses tech limited he is actively associated with the institution of engineers since 80s he was honorary secretary of nagpur local center for two terms past chairman of maharashtra state center and also the nagpur local center he was the governing council member of indian concrete institute 
for 1999 to 2001 and council member for civil engineering division of the institution of engineers india for the four terms i would like to invite dr h o takre for the presidential address sir over to you please thank you amit eminent panelist of the session mr chandar rajid vessel traffic supervisor port authority of tanger city morocco my dynamic and proactive council members dr nt rangareddy who happens to be chairman of uh, who is chairman of mechanical engineering division board dr g ranganathan chairman kate dr bhaskar bhandarkar chairman marine engineering division board saptarshi basu consultant maritime security dharam chandra ji chairman of uttarakhand state center mr sc chauhan honorary secretary uttarakhand state center moderator of the webinar mr amit kumar singh executive committee member malining division board uttarakhand state center council members committee members of uttarakhand state center corporate members staff from headquarter ladies and gentlemen at the outset i must congratulate the uttarakhand state center and uh, marine division board for organizing this technical webinar on application of composite materials in marine industry and their lightweight aspects the institution of engineers india always puts sincere efforts to keep its members informed and abreast about the latest engineering and technological developments occurring in national and international arena through organizing technical events on a regular basis involving eminent professional and practitioners over its last 100 years of existence the institution has provided valuable suggestions and policy inputs to the policy makers contributing to the national growth this webinar being organized involving renowned experts from maritime industry to discuss the highlights and pertinent issues of lightweight composite material in maritime sector we are interested to hear the advantages and benefits derived from the composite materials with high strain to weight ratio and stiffness to weight ratio the deliberation on these issues are expected to provide us more insights and leave us enriched. I hope that the discussion during the webinar will encompass all facets of the subject holistically involving all stakeholders. We are eager to hear from the experts on this energy topic and I hope everybody will get enlightened by their presentations. I wish this seminar all the success. Thank you one, thank you all. Jai Hind. Thank you, President, sir, for your encouraging word. And now we will move to our proceeding. Just sharing my screen for the basic brief of today's topic. And then we will first move to our panelists. So just give you the basic brief of today's topic, like materials are deep seated in our daily life more than the most people realize. Transportation, housing, clothing, communication, recreation, food, production, etc. Virtually every segment of everyday life is influenced to one degree or by another by material. In fact, early civilization has been designed, designated by the level of material development like Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age. So like no single material possesses all the advantage for the given application and that it would highly desirable to combine material in a way that utilize the best of each constituent in synthetic way. International Maritime Ocean 2020 I regulation on the sulfur dioxide and the greenhouse emission came into force and requiring greener fuel, energy saving and eco-friendly material technology. As the IMO environmental regulation have been starting to increase the energy efficiency of the ships, the IMO has begun to consider operational economics such as energy reduction through lightening the hull. And when the existing material is replaced by the composite material, the cargo transport volume increase due to weight reduction and the operation efficiency is approved. As the marine sector continues to look at improve efficiency and reduce overall cost, composite material will play a huge part in the future of marine construction. Now, we'd like to invite our first key speaker, Mr. Shatar Rashid, for brief on our subject. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, everyone. 
Mr. Shadar Rashid is a vessel traffic supervisor within the Port Authority of Tangerine City, Morocco. Mr. Rashid is skilled in the marine navigation, operation management, international shipping and management system. In 2019, he also joined the marine environmental research team as a PhD student in the Department of Earth and Environmental Science at the Faculty of Science and Technology at Tangerine University of Almec Asadi, Morocco. Mr. Rashid, floor is on yours. Thank you, Mr. Amit. Thank you, Mr. President and all honorary chairmen and directors here. So, and thank you also for the audience to be attended here to, to this interesting technical webinar of uh, the application of composite materials, materials in marine industry and their light weight aspects. So I will share my screen just to start my, my presentation. <laughs> So our presentation is the application of composite materials in the marine industry. So prepared and they will be presented by me. So that our table of contents, it will include an introduction about uh, a brief history of composites, uh, the type and their classification, the performance of these composites, and also the application of the composites in the marine industry, which uh, which is very interesting for, for us as, a, as the subject of this uh, technical webinar. So as, as you know, composites uh, meaning made up of district parts of elements. So composites are mat mater composite materials are simply a combination of different structures, different of different materials. A wood coming from a tree is composed of uh, cellulose fibers merged together in a linen body surrounding them. So man has been using composite materials for engineering uh, purposes for a very long time. In fact, wattle and dub is one of the oldest synthetic composite materials over 6,000 years old. Another example is the use uh, of adobe bricks made of mud and straw. So the composite, if we can see the composite, the idea of placing parts is the idea of placing parts together for different kinds of reasons. It's not new or recent. In fact, the first to make use of composite structures was not mankind, but nature itself. So the first Chinese so, uh, we can start this uh, with a brief history about the composite materials that uh, have been uh, have been made by man uh, throughout the history. So some examples of ancient composite structures. So uh, the ancient warrior, the, ch the ancient warrior shields are made of metal, wood, skin, skin sheets, uh, such as Ajax shield in Trojan War. So also the the first chainit great wall. Uh, made of mud and straws is an ancient warrior shells. So it was made of wood and skin and metal. So after the Second World War and as nations competed in industrial evolution, there has been an increasing demand for materials that are safer and stronger yet later in field as diverse as aerospace energy and civil construction. So the demands made on materials for better overall performance are so great and diverse uh, that no one conventional material can be satisfied. This naturally leads to a resurgence of the ancient concept of combining different materials in an integral composite material to satisfy the user requirements. Today, Advanced composites are produced and researched this due to the integration of the material science and engineering input with the manufacturing and design input at all levels. From conception uh, to commissioning of an item throughout the inspection during the lifetime, as well as failure analysis. As you can see in this picture, so it's a fiber metal laminate composite developed in late 1970. Such uh, structures are used 
in fuselage of a commercial airplanes, which include uh, prepared and uh, and aluminium. Uh, so composites as a crucial need. Composites are an important member of the industrial materials because of their value in technology, economics, and society. So this figure uh, make a comparison between conventional monolithic materials such as aluminum and steel and composite materials. So it's also indicate the possibility uh, possibilities of improvements that one can obtain over the conventional materials by the use of, uh, of composite materials. As, as such, it described vividly the driving force behind large efforts in field of the composite materials. So as you can see from this graph, glass fiber reinforced resins have been in use since the early 20th century. Glass fiber reinforced resins are very light and strong materials. The third quarter of the 20th century saw the uh, emergence of the so-called advanced fibers of extremely high modulus, for example, boron, carbon, silicon, carbide, and uh, alumina. So it's important to note the fact that our society has become very energy conscious the last few decades. This leads to an increase in demand for lightweight materials, yet strong and stiff structures in all works of life. So why composite? So composite can be very strong and stiff, yet very light in, in weight. Ratios of strength to, to weight and stiffness to weight are several times greater than the conventional materials. Example of aluminum and steel. Since they are lightweight, they contribute to low energy consumption, energy production also, and application. Example, vehicle weight reduction, wind power generators. They are fatigue and corrosion resistive. As a result of the above properties and, uh, and, uh, and characteristics, the maintenance cost of the composite structure is reduced. They have less uh, thermal expansion, so in combination, in combination with other, other materials, less tensions are introduced to the structure upon temperature changes. Now we'll talk about the, the, the composite type and their classifications. So a composite materials, uh, materials consists of two basic parts. The first one is the matrix material, which is the bulk component of the highest content that surrounds all other components and keeps them all together. And uh, the second part is the fillers that in a structural composite, are used to reinforce the mechanical properties of the composites, and thus they are called reinforcements in mass. In most of the cases, fibers uh, are used. For both matrix and reinforcement material, there is a large variety. There is a large variety of material used in production of composites, each of them selected for their special uh, properties. Uh, so this figure are, is a, a presentation of a uh, fiber reinforced composite material. Most of the reinforcements used in composite have uh, a fibrous uh, form because materials are uh, stronger and stiffer in the fibrous form than in any other form. So uh, for each of the material types, the basic characteristics are the the uh, the so as you can see for fiber and the filament reinforcement, we have high strength, high stiffness, low density uh, as examples of this, of this, of this uh, composite uh, reinforcement, we have carbon, glass fiber, and army. For the matrix, good uh, shared properties, low density, and as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a composite or materials, we have thermosets and therm thermoplastics, epoxy, polyester, and nylon, and uh, ceramics. So the result is a composite that is joined together 
with the high strength, high stiffness, good shear properties, and low uh, density. We talked about two the, the two important parts of the composites, so uh, which is the, the fillers and the matrix. And fillers is the reinforcement. So for the, the reinforcement classification, there are five uh, basic types of composites in respect to the reinforcement we use. So uh, fiber, we have fibers, particles, flake, laminar, and layered and filled composite. So from the left to the right, glass uh, fibers in robin form, as you can see, particles of 10 to 40 micrometer, flake uh, of about one millimeter, and, and sheets uh, of wood. And also fillers can be, uh, can be of any indefinite form. All their composite production involved also uh, whiskers, which are small sized monocrystals in form of, uh, of roots. So we will talk uh, in detail about uh, this, uh, this, this six type of reinforcements. So the first one is the, is the, uh, is the fiber. Fibers, so fibers reinforce along uh, along the line of their length. Reinforcements may be first D, two D, or two D, and they can be natural, cellulose uh, cellulosic so, fibers. Example: sisal, cotton, flax, jet, hemp, and rubby. And we have also protein fibers, as hair, wool, and silk. Or uh, there will be a constructed uh, one like metal fibers, glass fibers, polyamide fibers, or thermoplastic fibers, or ceramic fibers. We have also the particles, which is reinforced a composite equally in all direction. They can be metal uh, or non-metal, uh, oxide ceramics, carbides, and uh, metal or plastic particles. We have flakes, though, which is due to their properties. They are usually used into the reinforcements. And the most of <clears throat> most of flake or common flake made of glass and mica and metals such as aluminium. We have uh, laminates. Uh, our sheets composed of one or more materials. Layers can be and layers can be arranged in different direction to give strength uh, where needed to the to the material to the composite. We have fillers. When added to a composite, this, this type of, LA, of, of materials, when added to a composite, results in strengthening and weight reduction. Example, or example of honeycombs, sandwich structures. Combinations. So a single composite can be made of several uh, different materials, such as the above, and a product can assist of different composites. Example of the modern ski. So as we have seen, there are several types of, uh, as, we, as we have seen, the, the are several types of composites in respect to a filler type and a filler orientation. So if we, if we would like to summarize all the above categories in a tree, so which represented in this, in this figure, so the composites can be seen as a tree basic type. Uh, we have particle reinforced, we have fiber reinforced and the, and the, and the structural uh, part, which is containing uh, large scale structures. And the same categories of them as shown uh, in this figure are related to different type of this, uh, dispersions and orientations, which will be uh, further discussed to um, a degree in the following chapters. Uh, regarding the matrix, second part of the composite, we talked about the reinforcement and the and the and fillers. Now we will talk about the the matrix classification. So matrix materials surrounds uh, and protects and transfers forces to reinforcement. Typically, typically are lightweight and medium strength uh, material that have the following characteristics: good interlaminar uh, shear strength, so that the composite will not deform or peel. Toughness so that it uh, absorbs and transmits the forces to the reinforcing material, resists corrosion from water uh, sorption and chemicals, have the, the proper temperature properties as it regards to manufacturing and other operation. 
they are low cost materials to be used in large uh, quantities. So the majority of matrix materials are metals, high toughness, uh, high strength, high modulus of elasticity, ductility uh, and temperature resistance. Also uh, are ceramics, which, which uh, they are uh, strength and uh, stiffness, but the uh, they like uh, the lack of toughness. They are used in application where resistance to higher temperatures and corrosion is desired. Jets and automobile engines, cutting tools and pressure vessels. They are typically also used along uh, with carbon fibers and aluminum oxide, uh, silicon carbide and silicon nitride, aluminum oxide and, uh, and uh, millet. We found also polymers, which they are uh, lower in density, uh, resistive, resistive to corrosion, and they have low thermal expansion. So polymers are divided in two main categories, the thermoplastics, which are materials having large molecules, which are not interconnected with each other by uh, covalent bonding. And for the, the case, the thermosets, there is a covalent network because uh, of the difference in structure, in, uh, difference in structure importance, uh, important differences in property arise. And we have also thermosets, uh, which is which are polyesters, vinyl esters, resins, epoxy, polyamide, uh, phenolic, and uh, poly uh, polycanerite resins. And now we will talk a little bit of about the performance of this composite material. So the, the performance or functional characteristics of composite materials are of many types. So they have physical properties such as crystal structures, melting point, density, vapor pressure, uh, porosity, or permeability. They have also mechanical properties uh, like modulus of elasticity, hardness, quotient ratio, ultimate strength, yield strength, figure, fatigue properties, and etc. They have also electrical properties. Uh, like conductivity, the electric constant. Also, they have thermal properties like thermal conductivity, uh, specific heat, thermal expansion coefficients. And finally, they have also uh, chemical properties such as corrosion, degradation, and oxidation. So material properties are the link between the basic structures and composition of the material and the, the service performance of, of, the, of the parts of the whole uh, composite. So uh, composites do not inherit their properties from their components in a way that one can predict their character by summing up the values of the correspond correspondence value and components. So, uh, there are several studies of mechanical behavior of a composite material, uh, micromechanics, ply mechanics, macro micromechanics, and failure theories. Micromechanics in the in study of mechanical behavior of a composite in terms of its constituents. And by, uh, also, there the are uh, the mathematical models for predicting each of their property. They have uh, special measurements of actual properties uh, are always needed to conform the values of, uh, of, uh, of the measurements. So this oversimplification is now as the, the role of, of mixtures and can, and, can, uh, and can only be applied under many, many assumptions and, and experiences. So regarding the, the, the application of this of this of these composite materials in our daily life in our own, in different industries, so uh, composites are capable of achieving combination of properties not attainable by combination of conventional materials. So uh, composites are in every sports gear uh, in every sports gear. Some examples of composites is basically frame bond on carbon fibers. 
in uh, polypropylene, uh, uh, also surfboards made of view composite like papers from coconut and polyester. And example continue to the application like protective equip uh, like protective equipment, polycarbonate fiber reinforced helmets, ski, and many other uh, applica applications. We found them also in the medicine, uh, in orthopedic uh, process, uh, and special laboratory equipment uh, like uh, C scan, arm, and or X ray coach with no many sick uh, or, uh, or absorbing uh, properties. They found them in energy sector are, are also numerous as the wind turbines use uh, and the offshore oil mining installation have a large demands on special structure composite of all types. Also in civil extraction, they uses this material composite from the ancient times and nowadays still reinforced uh, con concrete structures. In the electronic sector, uh, a good example of composite uh, material uh, and their use is the printed circuit boards made of fibers reinforced epoxy, uh, substrates, and one or more copper surfaces where the electric circuit is, uh, is formed with chemical uh, uh, etching techniques. Uh, regarding the application of this composite in the marine industry, so uh, drivers of light light weighting uh, in, in in maritime industry, so light weighting mari of maritime platforms is driven by the following objectives. So is the reason that that lets uh, experts and and societies to think to 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 replace the conventional material uh, about this uh, this composite material. So the first reason is reduce fuel consumption. Uh, second reason is improve speed, maneuverability, and transportability. And the, the last reason is the increase of weapons payload uh, for the, the for the military purposes or uh, for the uh, for the armies. So these desired attributes are balanced against cost constraints and survivability and survivability. Uh, smaller smaller vessels often are often bought entirely with lightweight materials in order to achieve desired high speed performance or transportability objectives, and also larger ships tend to use lightweight materials to structures above the main the main deck. This has the effect of reducing ship weight and improving stability without uh, diminish, diminishing overall uh, overall hull greater uh, girder and, and, and stiffness. So the, for the, uh, the early application of this composite in the marine industry, so the first marine application of the Faber uh, reinforced polymers composite material was in the construction of boats uh, shortly after the World War II. So boat boulders began to use the, the Faber reinforced uh, polymer composite instead of timber, which was traditionally used in small maritime crafts because wood was becoming increasingly uh, scarce and expensive. Timber was a losing favor with many boat builders and owners because wooden boats were easily degraded by seawater and marine organisms and therefore required ongoing maintenance and repairs that can be expensive and uh, and uh, they cost a lot of for, for the owners of the, of, the, of the small boats. So the earliest attempt to fabricate a boat uh, hull with uh, fiber reinforced polymers composite was in 1947, when 12 small uh, surf boats were made for the United States Navy. So most maritime crafts are built using glass reinforced polyester composite, although sandwich composites and advanced Fiber reinforced polymers materials containing carbon are aramid fibers with vinyl, ester, and epoxy resin matrices. They are commonly used uh, for high performance structural uh, applications. Uh, so, for the application of these composites in the marine industry, we can found them for hulls, ships, and submarines. So uh, the introduction of advanced composite materials uh, uh, composite materials represented 
a milestone innovation in the manufacturing of boats and vessels. Composite technology has allowed manufacturers to improve the quality of the products obtaining safe and light structures with the benefits in terms of sailing performance and work life. So safer holes and decks and decks are the main application where the shipbuilding industry has adopted composite sandwich structures composed by two skins with high stiffness and strength uh, placed on the external pieces of our components and by soft and thick core. So the weight reduction results in a larger cargo capacity, fuel saving, lower in, 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 in inertia, uh, and increased uh, ship stability and buoyancy. In addition, uh, fiber reinforced polymers show, show a satisfactory corrosion resistance in marine environments and require less maintenance in uh, less maintenance. So in marine uh, sandwich structures, aramid, carbon, glass, fiber reinforced polymers materials are commonly used as skins instead of metals. Polymeric uh, forms such as polystyrene and polyvinyl colorate and onicamp and are mainly used as a core materials. The combination of aramid fibers or carbon uh, to reinforce high quality resins and ultra light cores uh, results in boats with unmatched mechanical properties and uh, dimension. For their, their application in propulsion and, and propellers, in recent years, the rapid development of fiber reinforced materials brought a new opportunity, uh, a new opportunity uh, to, to the propeller designers. Compared with the metal uh, materials, fiber reinforced materials have higher specific strength and uh, and uh, and and uh, strength and specific stiffness lighter weight and good damping performance and design ability this excellent material properties make the fiber reinforced composite effectively applied to produce uh, the marine propeller because of the excellent design ability and the proper damping property of the composite provide uh, the foundation of the marine propeller to reduce weight noise and increased fuel uh, efficiency by using this lightweight composite materials. In their application in modern yachts and rig design, so modern materials uh, and modern technology have made it possible to travel faster and safer. Tiles are easier to handle with less glow. Earlier rigs used to made from soft steel, wood and wire ropes and style uh, made from cotton. But today, rigs and sails are predominantly made of, from carbon and carbon comp, comp, lightweight composites. So carbon fibers, lightweight, uh, light, lightweight strength and stiffness combi combined with its environmental resistance and durability contribute to superior performance in cables compared with the dry fiber cables and stainless steel cables used in a conventional uh, rigging system. So regarding the application of this of this composite in the offshore in the offshore industry, so composites uh, offer the potential to reduce uh, the cost uh, the costs of uh, oil and gas production because of their outstanding corrosion resistance against most or most types of chemicals. It is estimated that the composites provide a weight saving of 30 to 50 percent compared to steel uh, for many non-structural components. The application of fiber reinforced polymers in offshore sector has been also considered for the production of a variety of primary and secondary structures, primary or critical structures installed on floating plants include razors and tendons, secondary structures on floating platforms that can be manufactured from composites include helicopters, bridge, pipe systems, piping systems, and dowlings, and walkways, and then stairs. So the most type of composites used are uh, glass-reinforced polymers and finally composites, with later being used because of good fire resistance and advanced composites containing carbon fiber, Kelvar fibers or epoxy resins are also used sprangly because of their high uh, 
are not used because of the high uh, cost in the industry. For its application in marine renewable energy, so the category marine renewable energy system includes device and plants installed in the marine environments and harvesting the energy carried by waves, currents, and tides, uh, and tide salinity and temperature gradients, as well as wind. Among this tidal stream energy, uh, wave motion and offshore wind represent the most uh, mature technologies where glass and carbon fiber reinforced composites find increasing use. So carbon and glass reinforced composites represent a suitable replacement uh, for metal in the manufacturing of blades uh, for the, the alien, uh, alien energy, uh, offshore alien energy wind uh, and, and tidal energy devices. As a matter of fact, fiber reinforced polymers provide high specific strength and stiffness coupled with outstanding resistance to corrosion, moisture, and fatigue. Furthermore, they can be uh, molded into complex shapes with reduced overall uh, mass. They also can be found in marine applications. So, wire ropes display an important role today, being commonly applied in mine hosting electrical conductors, storage of satellites, roofs, bridge, and also in anchorage system for the offshore uh, installation or submersible, uh, or submersible installation or TLPS platforms. Due to recent advances in composite materials, there, are, there is a growing trend of replacing steel with carbon uh, fiber reinforced polymer in power cable, uh, in cable suspended. So bridges due to the large uh, span allowed by weight reduction and also in the offshore industry. However, for deep water application, the large self weight of uh, steel cables makes it their usage prohibitive, increasing uh, staging effects and wish and winch. In, in addition to their lightweight composite cables, show high specific strength and stiffness uh, outsta and outstanding uh, fatigue behavior. So this, uh, the application of these composites in the marine industry, they have uh, also a concerns as, it, as they, they, they have advantages and disadvantages from their, uh, from, from their long-term concerns in the, uh, for in light weighting maritime vehicles. We have design methodology, material availability, domestic manufacturing capability, structures and inspection and repair, and also the impact on the environment. And we have the main advantages of composite materials for marine application, which are strength to weight characteristics for uh, lighter weight durability, dimensional stability for lasting performance, corrosion resistance for deterioration for operation, lighter weight to reduce operating costs and improve efficiency, combination of multiple parts into one part for less maintenance, sound uh, baffling for less noisy operating environments, design flexibility for use in a complex shapes and in the, in the environment, high level of acoustic transparency for radoms and sonar domes, and enhanced stiffness uh, for uh, stability. Uh, from disadvantages and limitation of composite materials, uh, in the, we have, uh, so these properties of many important composites are anisotropic, the properties differ depending on the direction in which they are measured. This may be an advantage or a disadvantage. Many of the polymer-based uh, composites are subject to attack by chemical or solvents. Just, uh, just the polymer polymers themselves are susceptible to attack. Composite material are generally expensive. So the manufacturing methods for, uh, for shipping composite materials are often slow and uh, they cost uh, too much. So uh, uh, if we can ask why composites are still no selected over conventional material. So, uh, so composite uh, structures uh, need to be specifically, specifically designed for each purpose uh, board and tested. In most of the cases, uh, the testing uh, is destructive in this in, uh, increases the time and cost production. So the accusation, is still a key factor 
uh, for a selection uh, between composites and conventional material for vessel, uh, for vessel production. Accusation costs for composites uh, is higher is higher in large construction because of need of design and testing of composites and uh, and more time is needed for production of a vessel using composite while compared with the with the with the uh, with the bold bay conventional uh, materials regulation also for, uh, force marine structure to be over designed So how the accusation costs can be reduced uh, to use this uh, to, to use this lightweight materials. So for lightweight materials to be made affordable, so to be used in large ship construction, uh, the arc uh, three key factors should be improved. The, the first one is the material safety factors. Uh, they can be lowered after calculation and measurements of, of the actual operational limits of the composite material. And second factor is the, is the material characterization. There are possibilities of having less time consuming and no destructive methods in material testing. And the third factor is st structural design, the design uh, that can be improved using computational methods that utilize mechanical analysis models. So each of the factors has two characteristics uh, of great importance that, that are costs and words. Cost means effort, time, money necessary to exploit the opportunity, and words the achievable weight reduction, uh, the achievable weight reduction. So uh, first, obtaining more accurate mechanical properties through better laminate strength measuring technical uh, techniques is achievable. This case is agreeably than one word at the least, but the cost of taking it's minimal. Second, uh, secondly, better structural design is of high cost, but this opportunity is agreeably, uh, uh, arguably the one of word uh, the must. The high cost comes from bolding, robust uh, parametric structure design, but it can be regulated with structural optimization. Uh, and, and finally, reduction of material operational limits through methods such as reliability analysis is the opportunity with lowest uh, word uh, to cost ratio. Uh, the, the, model, uh, the, the ratio, the model needs are not mature enough and therefore mm, need to, uh, to be further uh, researched. So the market, uh, <coughs> so composite materials uh, have been used in marine industry for a number of years. The more traditional uh, application for composites include gratings and ducts, shafts and pipping, holes, shells, etc. For several decades, wood and uh, uh, ferrocements are some of the other composite techniques that are still being used uh, for marine application. So the market of, of composite material is heavily governed by the global economy, as well as the economics economies which they offer as a, as compared to the, uh, the competing materials with condition rip and uh, favorable. It's expected that, as you can see from the figure, that the marine industry will consume composite materials uh, to the tune of $1.5 billion uh, dollars in 2024. Uh, Sharting an annual growth of uh, over five uh, percent during next five years. So I I I uh, I can uh, conclude my presentation with this uh, with this paragraph, uh, which said cruise ships could be a major beneficiary of using composite superstructure uh, argitin ever seller, which can develop stability issues. Any weight saving in the superstructure would improve stability. As Swedish research project last C looked at replacing the superstructure of cruise ship Norwegian game in composite, the payback period of the extra structural cost if you took the fuel saving gained uh, from the weight reduction was uh, 5.9 years, but the payback 
from in camp, uh, from the extra cabins, you could vote for the same of all white was 2.5 years. For naval ships, the flexibility of the platform, potential of extra weaponry and increased speed are all are all the attraction which can be gained through top side weight reduction as well as reduce the fuel consumption or increase uh, branch. Thank you very much for your attention. And they list uh, talk for Mr. Amit. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nashid, for elaborate uh, explanation on the composite and its application. Thank you very much. Now I would like to invite our next panelist, Dr. N.T. Rangareddy. Dr. N.T. Rangareddy, he's a chairman and managing director at Legend Technology India Private Limited, Bengaluru, and the chairman mechanical division board, Institution of Engineers. Having over 34 year experience in aerospace sector, and more than 20 years experience of carrying out prestigious indigenous project and education at own country. More than 25 years hands-on experience as an entrepreneur and a major corporation and a startup environment businesses, technology and operation management and the strategy planning experience. I would like to invite Dr. N.T. Rengaredi to elaborate this subject on more. Sir, floor is yours, sir. Yeah, Namaskar. Uh... Amit Kumar Singh Ji, and thank you for your uh, nice introduction. You are able to see my screen. You are uh, able to see my screen, please. And not no, yet. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Sir, please share your screen from the bottom, that green button, sir, please. Yes, sir, it is coming. We are right. Yeah, it is coming. Yes, sir, are right, sir. Able to see yeah, the yeah, screen, We are able please. to see you, sir. Are right, Abhi? Are right, yes, right, right, sir. You, are, you can continue. It was, was a slow like that, sir. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Make it full screen, sir. Is it possible? Make it full screen. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Please continue. No okay, problem. okay, okay. Uh, respected President uh, Akareji and uh, Kate Chairman Rangnath and my very respected uh, Council colleague, Commander Dr. B. M. Bandarkar, Chairman of uh, Uttarakhand State Center, and Honorary Secretary, and all other corporate members and my panelists. I would like to take not much time on because a lot of adjectives are used on our leaders who are bringing the institution of ENAs to the greater rights. And uh, I would like to thank my earlier panelist, Chadar Rasid, because he has made my presentation is a little simple because he has covered a lot of uh, points on the composite uh, materials characteristics. So I would like to take around 20, 22 minutes on the presentation and wherever my earlier panelist has added, so I will not be uh, stressing more on that, uh, whichever area which he has not touched, I uh, will be taking little time. And after the presentation, any questions I would like to take. And uh, uh, this is uh, my contents of the presentation goes to introduction and uh, composites and marine applications and uh, marine materials and manufacturing methods and the conclusion. And this is uh, our company. We are in aerospace manufacturing company for the last 30 years. And uh, we were the, in the manufacturing of composites uh, products from the glass fiber, Kevlar, and also the carbon fiber uh, products for aerospace application more in a very less other applications on the ground and the automobile sector we have done. And we'll be sharing some of the experiences what we have done more on the manufacturing sector of uh, composite components and including a marine application. And as he has mentioned already, the composites, I just is an engineering way of explaining. I'm not a scientist to say, uh, but the uh, composites is a composition of two or more materials. As I said, a matrix plus reinforcement is a, is a composite. As already mentioned by the earlier speaker, there is a matrix is a thermoset and thermoplastic. It goes from nylon to PPS and the PABS, thermoset, polyester, vinyl, and epoxy and phenolic. And uh, reinforcement already mentioned is a glass aramid carbon natural fibers. And this become a fiber plus matrix goes to a composite materials. And as all the earlier speakers was mentioning, 
the characteristics of all the composite materials uh, and this is especially uh, the benefits of composites uh, mentioned uh, around 16 the times for uh, compiled long term durability low maintenance not magnetic maybe some of the uh, characteristics was not mentioned earlier radar transparent this is especially for a defense and in the other applications submarine applications the most useful high strength to weight ratio uh, rapid installation act in the manufacturing side and assembly side lightweight is mentioned already corrosion resistant electric strength high impact strength directional strength and uh, small to large part geometry parts consolidation customized space any difficult parts can be manufactured in the manufacturing technology in composites dimensional stability is one of the major advantage in the marine applications this was uh, done already by earlier speaker but just to again reinforce that uh, the usage of uh, composites are everywhere and uh, even if you go from aerospace automobile is now it is going on very widely in indian lot of automobile sectors are using composite materials for their bodies and even the critical components including the carbon fibers are used and the construction area highly used in the glass fibers doors windows and uh, beams and the wind turbines is a very large usage of a glass fiber for a blades sports wise for a lightweight for other things carbon fibers are used in medical equipments island gas i think island gas is one of the major source where or in indian latest law whichever goes underground the composite uh, the piping has to be not in the metal pipes has to be the uh, composite materials and the marine application which we are going to deal some little more in the next slides energy and power industry is a very area, area composites are used very extensively robotics and the railways is now it has become the major part of in the transportation composite material applications there and in the marine industry usage of uh, the parts in the composite parts goes i think uh, we just some of the uh, case studies we have taken as a mine sweeper and more in the defense sector goes mine sweeper hull uh, gfrp are well established in the boat building industry having been used since 1940s their advantages characteristics of a lightweight high strength design flexibility and low thermal conductivity also excellent resistance is important advantage reduced maintenance and repair cost as i mentioned the advantages of a composite materials in marine kevlar is also used in combination of with the gfrp and the sailing sites so the first sails were made from woven natural fiber fabrics and together synthetic fibers kevlar and carbon fibers are used their crucial requirement for a sail cloth are lightweight dimensional stability puncture resistance high tear burst and seam strength low porosity good cover and low water absorbency good resistance to microbes and uh, ultraviolet degradation and uh, smoothness the sails are used in the composite materials are used in the sails and the overcraft uh, skirts i think the overcraft skirts are similar as the inflatable craft down which i shown in the red and widely used since 1970 good tear strength is important to prevent propagation of any damage nylon is the best overall fiber for this application polyester made fibers may use if cost allows a significant amount of weight can be saved and a wasp and uh, uh, especially is safe and uh, easy paddle due to the hull structure and to build wasp in three layers of kevlar and fiberglass and making an ultralight paddle with the composite materials like fiber glass carbon foam wood and epoxy and the submarine applications are in the, again in the defense application goes in a marine site submarines classified with the different as per the work and use they are ballistic missile submarines guided missile submarines nuclear power attack submarines diesel electric attack submarine non nuclear submarine special mission submarines all these submarine hull are made with a fiber uh, glass or a carbon most of the applications nowadays carbon fiber are used composite materials with a different level of contribution as per the required end use purpose to minimize the evolution of toxic fumes by careful selection of the materials in the submarine applications and even in the upholstery marine upholstery the composite materials are used cruise ships can be regarded as a floating hotels and therefore textile properties requirements must be of contract standard furnishing windows cover bed sheets and carpets are required some important properties they are durable noise free vibration damping excellent fast to light rubbing salt water and anti static 
in the in the marine other applications flints and fish nets thailand is in the second generation mostly hdp on because it have more properties than the first generation metals like lesser weight less elongation ultraviolet resistant sea water resistant anti rot properties and long life etc and marine ropes Uh, mid 20th century with the introduction of the nylon ropes followed by the polyester these ropes half the weight of the steel ropes for about twice the diameter and the same strength ropes made from synthetic fiber aramid vectron high modulus polyethylene extra oil booms i think this is a way reused from the transporting of the oil from the sea to shore usually produced from woven nylon base fabric of about 175 gsm coated with hypoalon polycropylene pvc or nitrile rubber are inflated to a fairly low pressure but they have to be oil resistant and the life rafts jackets and the immersion suits uh, these are again the marine application side this base fabric for the life rafts and the jackets is generally woven polymide with butyl or natural rubber thermoplastic polyurethane and polypropylene coatings the life rafts is around 230 to 685 gsm now, and life jacket is 230 to 290 gsm immersion suits covers the whole body made with a synthetic fiber and high performance fibers and also treating with some finishes like water repellent flame retardant finishes etc and composite marine materials as i mentioned earlier from an integral part of the way composite structures perform because the builder is creating a structural material from diverse constituent compounds material science concepts are essentially to the understanding of how structural composites behave there are three broad, broad group of composite materials uh, reinforced materials resin materials and core materials reinforced materials already mentioned earlier fiberglass spectra travaria carbon fiber polyester and nylon it is the shown in the top the four in the screen carbon fiber nylon and your glass fiber and travaria and uh, the resin materials uh, which will supplied in the commercial side is a polyester resins and you have a vinyl ester resins down the box side the thermoplastic resins in the colored epoxy resins on the left side of the box is available in the, the fab manufacturers to use and the core materials very balsa is a wood based materials in the in between the for light weights thermoset forms down cross linked pvc forms and uh, pmi polyethylene acrylamide uh, honeycombs are used uh, very specially for the lightweight in the bigger structures there in marine applications in the body buildings and i would like to just take the manufacturing technologies which is used for the most of the different components used in other industries including the marine industries contact molding filament winding pultrusion resin transfer molding vacuum bag or autoclave and automated processes i think this is a contact molding uh, is the oldest and the most primitive manufacturing process but also the most widely used around the world resin is manually applied to a dry reinforcement placed into a tool surface and can be compared to gluing wallpaper with a brush the quality is totally dependent on the skill of the workforce and due to the difficulty in reliably guaranteeing the high quality laminates finally due to the limited external pressure wattage is difficult to control which has a great effect on the variability in the thickness of the laminates and the filament winding uh, this is in filament winding a tow of fibers pass through a bath of a resin and uh, wound into a revolving mandrel by traversing longitudinally along with the axis of the rotating mandrel pressure vessels are uh, conducive to filament winding since they have two clearly defined stress directions that can be accommodated by the winding direction advantage is that the process lends itself to automation such that cycle times and the labor cost can be kept low with high reliability and quality disadvantage of filament winding is that mandrel is often enclosed within the winding and the pultrusion this is again a mass producing for the internal uh, fixed cross sectional items fibers are drawn from a creel board and passed through a resin bath to impregnate the fibers with resin the impregnated fibers are then passed through a free dye to remove any excess resin and to preform the approximate final shape since the operation is automated labor costs are low and the reliability and quality of components uh, is high the process is generally limited to the constant cross section components with greatly restricted applications 
Pulsation has been very little in aerospace environments, but has found application in manufacturing as standard profile beams and as civil engineering and marine engineering applications. In the resin transfer molding, uh, manufacturing philosophy in which the resin and fibers are held apart until the very last moment. This tool may be rigid or contain flexible elements. The consolidation pressure on the tool is applied by means of mechanical clamps, a tooling press or the use of internal vacuum and defines the achieved volume fraction of a fiber with respect to resin. The main driver behind further developing of uh, resin transfer mold RTM processes is to devise fabrication methods that can overcome the geometrical complexity limitations imposed by autoclave moldings. Advantage of RTM, however, is lie within their geometrical and property flexibility. In automotive industry, small components are manufactured within minutes. And a vacuum bag or autoclave, this is very widely used in aerospace and even the application of submarine components where the defense applications are most important. In advanced composites, autoclave process are far by the most widely used in autoclave molding is the process of choice for the aerospace industry. These process are, processes use pre-impregnated unidirectional plies or woven cloths, which have been partially cured or beta staged. The productivity of autoclave molding is generally quite low since the manual layoff, bagging and demolding cycles consume significant labor and time. The capital expenditure of autoclaves are enormous, which constrains its usage to larger structures where these expenditures are justified. An automated uh, process is to increase productivity and user satisfaction, improve your quality of service with service management and process automation. And we have a small uh, video of uh, this one minute tag time that uh, robot original speed of the, uh, you may be knowing most of the designs of a, a composite materials, uh, you will be laying the uh, fibers in uh, zero direction and also you'll be laying from a 45 degree and also for the 90 degrees so this is usage as per the application and the designer requirements now it is a 45 degree layup is happening the uh, carbon fiber in automated uh, process system and uh, you can also see again the minus 45 degree zero degree and this most of these applications are used as per the design requirements in aerospace and other a very critical components used in uh, marine applications and after this layup is done and the resin is integrated and the carbon fibers are taken and in the automated processes the manually laying up is a very challenging uh, especially this is a steel rack around 700 to 950 mm within one minute it has been done two or a zero degree full layers was done two or a 45 degree two minus 45 and a two zero degree local reinforcement was done into that this is an automation in the composite uh, applications have come. In conclusion, composite materials offers endless design options with various manufacturing state of technologies. Composite materials will play an increasingly significant role in marine applications with their unique combination of properties such as low weight, high strength, low flammability, smoke density, heat release, non-toxic, durability and water resistance, etc. Composites are ideal for many marine applications, both for interior and exterior, offshore and onshore as well. And uh, thank you, uh, Paul, and uh, any questions? Hope I kept up my time. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Uh, we will take the question in the last after the next uh, panelist presentation. Sure. And uh, thank you so much for this uh, very deep, insighted uh, technical talk which you have given and really it is very i mean uh, knowledgeable to get it uh, processing method and the manufacturing method which you have shown us thank you so much sir i would like to invite our next panelist uh, engineer shabdrishi basho uh, mr shabdrishi basho he is a, a designated person asore and technical manager, uh, manager at quadrant maritime mumbai and marine security consultant uh, engineer Saptarvisi Basho is a marine engineer, uh, passed out from DMIT and uh, presented it is known as a Mary Calcutta. He has sailed in various foreign companies till time the, he rose to the rank of chief engineer chemical tankers for the 11 years. Currently, he is also involved as a FACSTA first class part B from Talani Maritime Institute 
and his private capacity has been consultant to private maritime security contractors and has been specialized in anti piracy hardening measures perimeter security surveillance and prevention of insurgency attack on the critical infrastructure i would like to engineer satoshi bashu to enlighten us on this subject engineer satoshi bashu thank you very much uh, dear sir uh, as due to paucity of time a uh, lot of things has been discussed by my previous brain from uh, repeating and uh, reinventing the wheel uh, uh kindly uh, to the on your camera sir possible hello uh, extend the uh, the panel as well webinar uh actually i would be saying that i am giving a i am uh, giving up uh, circumstances or environment while uh, i am tossing and turning on the gulf of trouble shooting assignment which had to come without uh, notice so the people uh, Uh, so there is a positive of time here yeah, um, so, bashu is it possible to uh, to your camera uh, sir uh, since uh, the bandwidth is extremely low i would uh, prefer to keep the camera off so that my voice is audible is my voice audible sir your yeah, voice is audible um, but uh, there is no presentation and uh, there is no view from yeah, the yeah 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 there is no presentation and there is no view unfortunately because i'm transmitting from offshore so there is a very limited bandwidth so i would like to carry on with my presentation uh, okay. on an oral mode so that if I, it doesn't overload the available bandwidth and it... thank you okay so dear uh, sir right from the thorndon bearings which are now the most uh, permanent bearings using uh, something very close to teflon as a composite material for lubrication of the stent tube uh, propeller shafts to the radar absorbing paints which we are using on the warships to the anti corrosive self polishing copolymer paints to the cermet coatings on the supermarine gas turbines of a uh, single uh, monocrystal blade composite materials are all over the maritime applications as a voice is not coming there any problem doctor sir doctor sir please rejoin huh? i think some network issues are there doctor sir please rejoin yeah can you read me sir yeah okay okay doctor sir is coming no, you can start again yeah yeah so the various aspects of application of my composites if we uh, as i said a vessel is not a system but a system of systems so in order to understand a ship you need to have systems engineering approach similarly to understand shipping you don't only need a merit, uh, marine engineering aspect you need a geopolitical geoeconomical aspect with the marine engineering backdrop on maritime history which gives a clear perspective of the technological trend as well as the projected trajectory of the development of technologies and how it has evolved over a period of time which gives the various aspects of the consequences of being in uh, ahead of the technological cycle loop at the same time of losing behind the technological cycle loop as well now if 
आई विल नॉट ओनली मिक्सचर ऑफ रेजिन एंड हार्डनर और लेटेस्ट है मैट्रिक्स एंड री इन्फोर्समेंट इट कैन बी एनीथिंग दैट इज कंपोज ऑफ वेरियस मेटेरियल्स इंक्लूडिंग डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ मेटालिक एंड सेमी मेटालिक और आर्गाना मेटालिक स्ट्रक्चर टेकिंग अव फ्रॉम दैट आई वुड से फर्स्ट आयन क्लैड्स दैट इज इनडिफेटेबल एंड एच एम एस वॉरियर विच वॉज बिल्ड बाय द ब्रिटिश एशर्ड इन दरिया ऑफ द ड्रेड नॉट्स वेर ऑल्सो नो लेस दैन कंपोजिट्स डिवाइड दमसेल्व दे वर अ कंपोजिट सिस्टम्स वेर द वुडन हल ऑफ द शिप वॉज इंटरपोज विद मेटालिक लेयर इन द फर्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ आर्मरिंग सो यू वी विट से दैट राइट फ्रॉम द हिस्टोरिकल डेवलपमेंट ऑफ शिपिंग विच इन इंडिया by the organic and non organic uh, like indian ship builders were known never to use a nail in order to tie the planks of the wood to they were using hemp oakum and let us say yarn in order to tie the planks so nicely together that it had the inherent buoyancy as well as flexibility in large let us say unyielding waves which would never crack the hull or never overstretch the hull beyond a certain limit of flexibility and those ships could basically trans navigate the globe much before the european started so called within ports discovery of the known world predominantly a european or a western creation the earliest not composites were used in steel making of india which were basically done by our rishi varaha mir and hence we have the ashoka stamb which is one of the best example of a uh, uh, let us say uh, nano crystal of carbon soot carbon layering of the uh, wrought iron in order to make a rust resistant structure ferric structure which has not rusted uh, rusted till date i would even say the samurai sword which has been crafted which is the pride of the japanese was the pride of the japanese empire where a result of buddhist navigation of the indian craftsmen from the central indian as well as southern indian states in the buddhist trail they went bhikshuni trail to the shores of uh, japan as well as china following the islamic invasion from the north and the dark west and this led to the development of one of the best metal crafts which was also interposed with various types of composites so if we talk about the development of historical perspectives the application of from a purely wooden and organic structure of ship building which was known in india and then indians were able to build ships with reference to which gives the structure of the naval architecture and naval architecture and composition of the ships right from transverse bulkheads to buoyancy chambers to let us say even uh, trimer and stabilizers and the web frames that amount of detail as well as our ancient texts like yukti kalpataru by raja bhoj which gives the classification of the present reverse vessel act where vishishtayana and samanayana were able to be classified as the various types of u form and v form hull forms which were known as deep sea going vessels as well as littoral and sub littoral crafts the the burgoyne maritime trade which in india started somewhere around 3000 bc or even more before that if we go by the correct histography and the chronology of the indian maritime empire it starts from somewhere around 7500 bc based on n13 dating and the construction of the first tidal let us say dry dock at lothal at somewhere around 2400 bc by the present radiocarbon uh, dating to let us say 5500 years by the n13 and geomorphological evidences says that india had arrived as a maritime superpower and was the cradle of maritime technology before the world has even started understanding what a uh, vessel was uh, built uh, vessel to be built was the earliest reference of the european ship building starts from somewhere around 500 bc of the 
Phoenician sea peoples. And then we see the Roman galleys taking shape where their ability to ram the ship into others gives the military might. And hence the first application of the composite of using a steel horn over a wooden projection in order to penetrate the center line of the ship in order to split the keel plate into the two parts, thereby causing progressive flooding and sinking of the enemy ships. From that perspective onwards, by that time, if you see, these ships were limited and propelled mostly by human power. And the structure was more, mostly a, a single layer of the kind of vessels were there in those kind of vessels compared to that 3000 years back itself indians were able to manufacture vessels which is recorded in the buddhist texts of mahavanso to be more than 800 cubits and capable of housing 5000 people on board now if you even compare today's super cruisers so india had arrived as a maritime superpower by nation and harness the mass to 10 mass Europeans could uh, uh, graduate from the galley ships to galasses at the battle of lepanto in summer 60 after the europeans by the time europeans went from the galley to the ga uh, galleons uh, or galasses to the galleons where they were able to have port mounted guns at that time, Indian shipbuilding were able to have ships which were having pedal propulsions right in the 10th and 11th century of the Chola Empire. It will be no exact through the ancient texts of the Periplus of the sea understand the details of the maritime trade, the geoeconomic and geopolitical power of the Indian maritime empire right from the pre Mauryan times, Harappan times, to Satvahanas, to Gupta Empire, and followed by Chola Empire, and lastly supported by Vijayanagara Empire, after which the 15th century, after the Adventist invasion and the destruction of the drying up the production systems from the hinterland which the Indians could basically use for vast trades. By the 11th century, how that it speak, India was able to control the entire Indian Ocean region from choke point to choke point, right from Babel Mandev to states of Hormuz to right over the Sundara Strait and Malacca Strait, making the entire area of the Indian maritime Indian Ocean as its dominance and power of suzerainty and the rest of the maritime trade, uh, maritime empires and maritime states were in tributary relations to the Chola Empire. And this was not due to just a stroke of coincidence and pure economic wealth or the vast capability of shipbuilding. It was due to technological prowesses that right at 11th century, AD, as per the recorded history of the present uh, system, we had paddle ships and we had a full fledged de detailed types of navy in the Chola Empire. Due to paucity of time, we will not go into the various rank file systems and the various kinds of structure. It is just sufficient to state that even in the 10th and 11th century, India had a deeply going war fleet supported by a coast guard and a water police for the littoral and the sub-littoral combat and area denial capability to power projections right into the choke points. The fighting, uh, the anti-piracy campaigns in the Sri Vijaya Empire gave the Indian maritime trade and the 
support uh, through projects the shores of the shang and tong shang empire right till the dawn of the 14th century the only after the ebbing of the indian maritime power the both military as well as the commercial where the ming dynasty able to launch its first uh, uh, treasure fleet in order to leave or capture the void that was left by the receding india did not last more than one emperor that is the hongle empire where seven treasure fleet voyages from various kind of fleet strength from 67 to 250 vessels to a maximum of 450 vessels were launched during the various 21 years of the existence of the treasure voyages <laughs> compared to the indian maritime power and the technological progresses of indian ship building which has been re uh, re recorded in the per periplus of the seas by various roman visitors visitors by marco polo by uh, when they basically supposed to have invented the mariner's compass which was basically a modified concept of matsya yantra where a fish ship magnet was left floating in a bowl of wooden bowl of fish oil in order to give the uh, magnetic north the world of this the myth of discovery by the buccaneers of the world west which is a result of the treaty of torridesillas which was finally circumvented by the rising american hegemony over the maritime empire contesting the british and european hegemony by the munro doctrine basically gives an idea that much before the european set their sails above the what is known as the pillars of hercules that is the uh, Uh, straits of gibraltar out of which they navigated to discover the so called undiscovered world which was undiscovered to the europe was was very well cartographed by the indian maritime cartographers which could accurately navigate from the entire greater india or indochine as they used to call it to indo french and right up to the chinese artifacts so right from india was in the basic central position in the maritime trade super highway with the europeans or the roman empire or the known world on the west side of its flank to the chinese and the uh, let us say asia pacific countries on the eastern flanks some of us indians will be proud to know that the empires of entire indochine which is known as the khmer empire and the entire indonesia with which it starts from the java empire was populated by people of bengal and people of the eastern coast of india that is why lot of bengalis have in their name the name maloy which is basically a a, a phonetic subscript of the malay peninsula which was basically a uh, 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 colonized and in fact settled by their forefathers indian maritime power did not have the brutality or the ferocity neither the uh, cons uh, the humanitarian costs of inquisitions or the blight of ethnic genocide and ethnic cleansing by the inquisitions or the colonizations of the western maritime power once they achieved ascendancy coming back to the topic of maritime uh, uh, composite applications on in shipping the day the battle of monitor and the ironclad took place at in the banks of mississippi after in the 17th century during the 17th to 18th century during the american civil war it ushered in a complete new doctrine of naval power where wooden walls or wooden composite ships were declared outdated as compared to ability to withstand the shock of the pounding shells from the various types of guns which were being used in the various galleon ships from that way onwards 
the application of steel on ships and metal on ships was a harbinger of industrial revolution and maritime revol revolution in maritime affairs in the western european powers the very development of the indefatigable and the warrior led france to develop ligoire which was again an iron clad the age of iron clad ushered in the various technological revolutions powered by the colonizations of the receding and deteriorating and decaying asian powers which included both china as well as india where the wealth was being sucked from here and being transposed to europe in order to funnel the research in those directions unfortunately the dominant empires in india which was predominantly the delhi sultanate followed by the mughal sultanate had very little vision except their religious and ethno religious identity war with the remaining uh, uh, rajput kings and polarizing uh, polarizing campaigns and iconoclasm rather than understanding the vagarities of maritime trade and maritime power and contesting the europeans hence these empires over period of time led to severe decline in indian maritime power and from a deep sea going tremendously powerful navy which was the largest navy of its time during the 11th and 10th century india was reduced to a brown water coastal fleet in the case of nowara in both the western and eastern ghats near the bengal and surat which was purely for anti piratical duties and for this and was shortly followed by the british and the portuguese by the dutch and the french who came at various ports in order to have the free market economy where they combined the might of the state power with the creativity and the freedom from law of a private enterprise by incorporating royal charters privateering and uh, the various companies time in the world the administration from a westernian structure the suzerainty of multinational companies whereby india was subjected to severe exploitation and not following the technological curve not understanding the various development of gun artillery and the various armor and uh, of the various capabilities of polling steam steam powered ships and finally when britain arrived by their dreadnought capacities by their revolving turret and large 8 16 inch gun the battle was all but lost lost a uh, very time emphatic in the middle of the trade route very well known to the rest of the attendants so there is no merit in repeating what is very important to understand today as members of institution of india technological prowess yes and corporate excellence to technological wisdom and the service of humanity as a strategic Political and geographic aspect as well. And these aspects are so profound; it can affect the destinies of nation as it has affected in past. Had Indians basically capitulated on the development of the vast artillery power, which the Indians always had an upper hand, bronze casting and iron casting, even during the Mughal power, and they had thought about. having a vast sea fleet ever seen a spark of brilliance or a victory over the maritime uh, power till the ice war and the rise of the maratha naval power 
द राइज ऑफ मैराथन एवल पावर एंड सब्सिक्वेंट वेलर वेर इट बेसिकली डेसिमेटेड द पोर्चुगीज मैराथन एम्पायर एंड द पोर्चुगीज एम्पायर इन द वेस्ट फॉलोड बाय द सब्जुकेशन ऑफ सिद्धिज अल्टीमेटली टू सकम टू द ब्रिटिश नेवल पावर इन द एंग्लो मैराथन वॉर एंड सब्सिक्वेंट डिक्लाइन ऑफ द मीन मराठा मैराथन पावर बाय after the death of the sons and daughters of hanuji angre was the final chapter in the greatly valorous history and one of the most chequered past of a civilization which has been the largest reigning maritime superpower in the recorded history of mankind whose maritime empire has stretched more than the japanese empire in the height of the japanese maritime victories in the asia pacific in the second world war so what we need to do today as institution of engineers and members is reclaim our destiny revisit our past and not only study technology for the pure academic purpose but also have an underlining of the national focus and development of sea power with all aspects of state power that is dying diplomatic informational military as well as economic it is only through the development of sea power will our nation regain the status of vishwa guru and the most prosperous state in the world it is no miracle that indians were known as the golden uh, bird it is not because india was only endowed with rich natural resources it was ability of the indians to have uh, the vast suzerainty where they were selling the surpluses of production mr basu we are unable to hear you and uh, can you conclude which please? used to be both eastern and western hemp to their inherent quality and artifacts were extremely valued by both rest of the world and they were brought up at high prices leading to tremendous prosperity and we must not forget that the complacency and the internal strife which led to the decline of the indian maritime power has also a lesson for us to be learned that not only in the world of composites which is the one of the fastest progressing field right from radar absorbing paint to noise absorbing composite rubbers to let us say sirmet coatings on monocrystals of gas turbine to the special anti heat coatings arculeus project in europe does india need to have not only the technological know how but the application and the production line and not only the production line the entire application of the geo commercial and the geo uh, political aspect of a concentrated aspect of sea power where we will dominate the oceans and dominate the technological spectrum again in order to make reclaim the true position of our motherhood and once again be proud to be indians for all and we will not need to study fraud huges ranking but we will study varamir and various uh, other indian rishis and the world will understand our contribution to not only the ship building but also the various other technological uh, aspect which is now been totally denied by the white man's narrative of white man's burden and the history has been rewritten as if the all the advancement in technology has belong to the west which i would say has been i think my speech has been on the controversial side but given the chance of detailed research everything is which i can tell you you can go through raja mukund mukherji where you will find various details of our indian glorious indian maritime history thank you very much for an opportunity to to speak and i hope my speech was bordering on relevance to the topic concerned thank you very much for your patient hearing and over to the moderators
Thank you, Mr. Saptasi Basu, for uh, geopolitical and geocommercial aspect of our shipping, and uh, particularly how we have been dominated and how we lost our legacy. But hopefully, with your talk and with the uh, with our um, like government initiative and making India all those things, we are going to regain our power in the maritime sector. Thank you so much. And uh, we are running uh, short of time, but we'll take few questions. And uh, just first question from uh, uh, Sir, uh, 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 for you, uh, uh, which is the most common manufacturing method suitable for producing pump casing, blower, etc. Secondly, how it is possible to get into the mass production of the same? And uh, thirdly, there is any process used to produce items like fair leads, cleats, bollards, uh, which is generally dependent on the foundry. <laughs> question is very general. So unless a designer wants it and the quantity, what it is required and the, what is affordable to pay and uh, he can suggest, uh, he can write to me directly with all the technical details. So I can suggest him what is a suitable manufacturing process as per the his specifications, what material you want to use it and why you want to use composite materials. And so then uh, is a one to one is a best way of solving is uh, answering his question instead of debating and asking questions already we are running out of time. Yeah. I, I hear my member, I can talk to him and I can give a solution for his challenges. So the name is not there, but uh, whomsoever uh, sir is also having his own company where he is providing solutions for a wide range of industry. So maybe um, uh, you, you can connect with him. And uh, there's one question, sir, uh, who is a leading composite manufacturer and, and fabricators in India? So many. I think nowadays, the composite manufacturers, every brand, even including Godrej, LNT, Reliance, and uh, Gopalan, and Tata's, and HL, NEL, DRDO. I think in every sector, whether it is in a, even a windmill sectors in I, Bangalore, we have a three fabricators, manufacturers. So, I think all over India, even Loia uh, composites are there in Kanpur. I think there's hundreds of uh, composite manufacturers in India spread all over India. I think if they can attend one Indian composite show, you will see hundreds of composite manufacturing companies in India. A lot of things are in G. Press in the Google, you'll get hundreds of names who are in the manufacturing sector. In so hopefully Mr. Satyan Chadda has got his answer. And uh, dear all, we are running short of time. So we just quickly, um, proceed our session to the next stage. Now, would like to invite Honorary Secretary, Uttarakhand State Center, Engineer S. C. Chauhan, sir, for the vote of thanks. Thank you, Amit Kumarji. Honorable Dr. H. O. Thakre, our dynamic president of Institution of Engineers, Commander B. M. Bandarkar, Chairman, Marine Engineering Division Board, Institution of Engineers, Dr. G. Rangnathan, Chairman Kate, Committee for Advancement of Technology and Engineering of Institution of Engineers, Engineer Dharam Chand, Chairman, Uttarakhand State Center, all council members, corporate members, committee members, key speaker, students, ladies and gentlemen. Very good evening to all of you. It is my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this wonderful occasion. On behalf of Institution of Engineers, Uttarakhand State Center, I extend my gratitude to Commander B.M. Bandarkar, Chairman, Marine Engineering Division Board of Institution of Engineers to take time from his busy schedule and grace the occasion. And he has always been helping for and promoting the webinars and seminars from our Uttarakhand State Center. Big thank to my team of Uttarakhand State Center for or and organizing committee for conducting this webinar. My precious thank to Dr. H.O. Thakre, President of Institution of Engineers, Dr. Jir Rangnath, Chairman, 
काटे इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ इंजीनियर्स डॉक्टर जे सक्सेना डायरेक्टर टेक्निकल ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ इंजीनियर्स एंड के सैन डायरेक्टर टेक्निकल ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ इंजीनियर्स फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग दिस प्लेटफॉर्म टू इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ इंजीनियर्स और उत्तराखंड सेंटर फॉर दिस वेबिनार I express my heartly gratitude to panelist Mr. M. Sathar Rasid, all the way from Morocco, Dr. N. T. Ranga Reddy, and Sri Sapkrishi Basuji for enriching us on this subject of very wonderful subject of the application of composite material. in marine industry and their lightweight aspect of course apart from this marine engineering we have learned lot of about this composite material how it can be used in other industries like space electronics medical construction oil and gas auto sports and railways robot etc there is a lot of opportunity of this composite apartment and especially with the property of just what i learned this lightweight and design flexibility thermal properties strength stability corrosion etc there is a lot of property which can be enhanced for using in different field of the other. that is a very vast subject initially as i think it is not so Vast, but uh, today I came to know that is the very vast subject of the composite material. Thank you for all for giving their wonderful and very elaborated uh, uh, talk on this subject. And uh, one of uh, very important, we I feel the proud to know that our one defines shipyard, garden, rich ship builder, and the engineering limited. means uh, grsc has become first shipyard in country to successful infuse composite technology with ins kelton which has the unique feature of structure made for uh, made of the carbon uh, fiber composite material and our drdo has composite research center where they are developing sonar dome composite antenna composite cabin etc for naval ship i would like to express gratitude to all esteemed delegates of webinar for their presence and contribution and having the interaction on this webinar and making this webinar a great successful thank you very much thank you the world thank you very much Jai Hind. Jai Hind. Just we will play our uh, national anthem, and then after that we will end our session. I would request everybody to please. Permission of Chairman, can we end the session? Very well, sir. Thank you, Amit Thank you, Thank you, thank you. Thank you Shatar. Thank Good you. afternoon. Thank you, Shatar. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank thank you, 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 thank you,
थैंक यू रेड्डी रंगा रेड्डी साहब थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर थैंक यू एवरीबॉडी थैंक यू थैंक यू रेड्डी सर सतपति सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच ओके ओके थैंक यू बंडारकर सर